Next on Northwest News Weekend, temps are heating up, but a river search is a grim reminder about the danger on the water. Then a university on alert, a deadly infection claims one of their own. And searching for clues in the ashes, the new suspects in a destructive school fire. Thanks for joining us this Saturday. I'm Stephen Kilbreth. Your news starts now. This is NWCN. Northwest News and Weather 24 hours a day. Now, Northwest News Weekend. And we begin tonight with a developing story. Authorities are searching for a missing rafter in King County, Washington. This is happening in Black Diamond, just east of the Green River Gorge. A neighbor spotted a rafter this afternoon who seemed to be in distress. That rafter said a man in his group flipped over into the river. As the other rafter is trying to help him, the man apparently slipped out of his life jacket into the fast-moving water. The group managed to get to shore and called authorities. We're told searchers recovered a raft and life jacket, but there's still no sign of the man himself. Authorities describe the area where he disappeared as narrow and rocky. At last check, authorities were deploying a search helicopter to scan the river. Authorities are bracing for more potential water rescues this weekend as people get out and enjoy all the sunshine. Despite the warm weather, plenty of rivers are still running high and cold. That includes the Clackamas River in Portland. We spotted this girl trying to climb out, only to hit her shin on a rock and fall back in. Some people nearby managed to pull her out. I like was halfway up and it was just like, bloop. Like everyone needs to know that the rocks are super slippery. Marine deputies actually advise against people swimming right now until the water actually warms up a bit. Thanks, Don. A hiker who went missing nearly five days in Washington's Olympic National Park is safe tonight. A search team found 55-year-old David Snyder this morning. This is the actual helicopter rescue. Authorities say Snyder tried to take a shortcut to the trailhead when he got trapped in a drainage ditch. The hiker flashed a light at a chopper to get its attention. Snyder was dehydrated and hypothermic, but otherwise okay. An Oregon college student has died from bacterial meningitis, and now health officials need to find anyone who was exposed. 21-year-old Lil Pagenstetcher, a University of Oregon student, died last night at a Eugene hospital. She belonged to the Chi Omega sorority, and U of O says it's now given many of the members medication. One health expert says people can better protect themselves by washing their hands, keeping surfaces clean, and getting vaccinated. If you're going to be living with people, if you're going to be in pro close proximity, if you're a school-age child, um, if you're in college or you're, you're, you're just around a lot of people, the chance of having exposure is, is there. And it's such an easy step to do. Health officials want to find anyone who came into extended contact with Pagan Stetcher in the past week. Police accused three Oregon teenagers of starting a massive fire at their own school. The blaze forced more than a thousand students to flee yesterday from Woodburn High. News Channel 8's Catherine Cook tells us more about the charges the teens are going to face. Security guards keeping everyone off Woodburn High School property, now the scene of a criminal investigation. On Friday morning, a massive fire gutted the school's wood and metal shop, sending billows of black smoke into the air. Images captured by Sky 8 were just as haunting to the 1,400 students on the ground. It was chaos. It was chaos. There was a lot of people just running around. Some people were crying. But at the beginning, nobody really thought it was important. And then you started thinking, you know, is the school going to burn down? By nightfall, fear and angst gave way to new emotions as police arrested three 15-year-old boys, all Woodburn High School students. Only on eight, our cameras were rolling as police drove them to juvenile detention. The teens faced multiple charges, first-degree arson, reckless endangerment, and reckless burning. It kind of shocked people that I think it just turned out to be an accident that's gone wrong and... You know, it's, I guess, little things, big problems. A day after the fire, students like Tristan Redbird are trying to stay positive and celebrating Mother's Day weekend in the park. But even decorating for the celebration reminds Edelmira Salas of the fire and the art projects that she lost in it. I feel pretty sad. Like, I feel really emotional because, you know, I lost, I lost all my belongings there. And like the school's not going to be the same as it was. Then there's the question of when students will return to class. The school will be closed all of next week. And it really makes you miss your class too, because you're thinking about like, you know, I kind of like school. 
District officials are going to spend next week planning how students will finish the school year. In the meantime, fire investigators are still at the school looking through the rubble for the exact cause of the fire. Firefighters rescued a man from Seattle's Gasworks Park today. Police say the man ignored trespassing signs, hopped a fence, then climbed on top of an old gas tank in the park. He lost his footing and fell dozens of feet, landing on a metal platform. The man is in the hospital with a broken leg. Police are questioning two people about a murder victim found in a burned out car. Authorities in Auburn, Washington took the pair into custody today. Investigators think the two might know what happened to 39 year old Denise Grigsby. Police discovered her body last weekend in the trunk of this burned up car. An autopsy shows she died from a blow to the head. Police think a hit and run victim is a woman who disappeared a few days ago from Battleground, Washington. They say someone found 22-year-old Tatiana Tupakova in a ditch along Highway 503. An autopsy today shows that she died from blunt force trauma. Anyone with information about this case is asked to call police. The Washington State Patrol is investigating an accident that killed a 16-year-old boy. The teenager was lying in the middle of the road in Chehalis when an SUV ran over him. The driver says it happened as she came around a curve in an area with no street lights. It's unclear why the teen was lying in the road. A quick heads up for drivers in Seattle. The Mercer Street on and off ramps to I-5 are closed this weekend and they don't reopen until 5 o'clock Monday morning. Seattle DOT is spending the weekend working on the Mercer Mess project. Coming up, it's the moment they've waited for for years. A look at this rite of passage for thousands around the Northwest. And Don Carson will be back with a look at your complete forecast. You're watching Northwest News.